Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, Image Radio Call Sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Sam J. Uh, he doesn't have a call sign yet. He's uh, just experimenting with the long range stuff until he passes his ham test. I hope he's working hard on his technician. The videos for the technician, you can go to ke0og.net slash training, and that will point you to where the videos are on the ARRL uh, uh, YouTube video page. The general and extra videos are, uh, you have to log in to ARRL first in order to be able to use those, but the technician are out there and open for free. And joining the ARRL is not a bad thing. I've been recommending it for many years. I've been a member for over 45 years straight. The question is this. Hello. I'm getting into antennas and had a question about length. As you know, there's wavelength, half wavelength, and quarter wavelength. If you have an antenna transmitting on one quarter wavelength, as it propagates, does the wave relax? and transform into a standard wavelength. Also the same for the half wavelength, and then thanks. Um, actually, no, none of that. So let's take a look at this. We'll, we'll make this ground, okay? And we'll do a quarter wave antenna here. This is one quarter wave. Lambda is the sign for wavelength. And what happens here, you, you can almost view it as though there's a mirror of this antenna down here because the half wave dipole is your standard antenna. Now the way this works, if you look at the far field, take any spot on here and it will broadcast out. You will also get a broadcast from there and so that's how you get your your direction of the waves and so on but that's not how it actually works and we'll go back to basics if you have a wire with current i going through it it will create a magnetic field around it let's see right hand rule it should be the other way um it will create a magnetic field around it, okay? If this wave is uh, alternating current, AC, really RF, radio frequency, every point on the antenna has a little wavelet circling around it. Now, as this goes to AC, it will collapse on itself at the same time it expands outwards. So what you get from this one point is more waves and they propagate outward at the speed of light in the medium and the speed of light in air is almost the same as in a vacuum. So the thing will speed out. Now, you've got the same thing from every point on here. Now you say, now wait a minute, you can't keep track of every point. No, you can't. This mess in here where the waves are sorting themselves out is called the near field. The far field is where these start to add together and you get a wave front that's propagating this way. Now these waves are transverse waves. They're not compression waves like sound. They're transverse waves. Um, and you get a wave which is actually a summation of all these points and where they finally put them together now you get the far field. It is the far field we are interested in because it's more than about 
two or three wavelengths away from the antenna, you get the far field out there, okay? So what you're getting in reality, you've got an antenna and you get This induces magnetic fields. Now, the current is changing, okay? So a changing magnetic field will induce an electric current, and it could be back in the wire, it could be in another wire, but it could also be in the air. You're going to get a sort of a perpendicular magnetic field in here. And again, these expand outward at the speed of light. Okay. That's how an antenna works. All right. Now, what, why do we use half wave antennas and quarter wave antennas? First of all, a full wavelength if you put this out there, this is going opposite the direction this is going. And so if you get stuff going out here and stuff going out here, and then when this comes down here, you get stuff here and here, and it kind of makes for a mess. You end up putting the signal back into the uh, antenna. So what we're going to do is just use a half wave, because a half wave, this is the uh, current waveform on a half wave. This is the voltage waveform. High voltage at the ends, low current at the ends, because there's no place for the current to go. Voltage is just a potential. It's trying to push the current. Okay, so you're going to discover here that uh, you are um, at a nice point. So a half wave generates very nicely these outgoing waves. It'll come down here, generate a wave, and generate a wave, and so on. And it goes out very nicely. Now, where does the quarter wave come in? The quarter wave comes in when you're over ground. This would be one quarter lambda. And you can treat the ground as a mirror. And you will see in the mirror the other half of the antenna virtually. Now, when a signal goes out from this antenna, when you get into the far field, it's going to hit the ground and reflect at an equal angle. And so, again, because it's vertical, it's also transmitting in this direction. These reinforce each other, and that's how you get uh, the drive plane on that. So, there you go. That is why one half wavelength and one quarter wavelength are so special. Let's see if we answered your question. Um, so, no, the wave doesn't relax. In fact, the uh, shifting voltage and current in here, it's actually the current that creates the magnetic field, and then the changing magnetic field induces an electric field. And remember, you've got to have both electromag electric field and magnetic field to create a an electromagnetic field. Here we are exciting that field, meaning putting any energy into it using the electrical current properties on this antenna. It's the current that creates uh, the other. A moving voltage doesn't create anything, but a moving current, uh, this is part of, uh, oh, Faraday's law or something. When the current moves, if you have steady electric current, let's use a different color. If you have steady electric current, okay, steady electric current through here, you create a static magnetic field around the conductor, okay? But so what? The static magnetic field, a non-moving magnetic field, will not induce a current. 
So if the only way that'll work is if this is AC or RF or whatever, that way they go back and forth, back and forth, and a changing magnetic field creates a changing electric field, which in turn creates the changing magnetic field, and you start getting these patterns uh, that go out over everywhere. And as we just noticed, the half-wave antenna and the quarter-wave antenna are the magic ones. So to sum up, uh, you'll find that most resonant antennas are half-wave or quarter-wave. Does that mean that only resonant antennas work? No. But if you are going to use a different antenna, uh, then you have to be able to load the antenna so that it will resonate enough for this type of stuff to take place. If it turns out the antenna is capacitive, um, then you add some inductance to it and vice versa. A truly resonant antenna has zero reactance at the feed point. It's a little hard to get, uh, but it can be done or close enough for amateur radio to work really well. So there you have it. I hope that helps. That's probably about 10 minutes more than you wanted on the subject, but I hope it helps. So if you would like to help support this channel financially, you may certainly do so by going to decastlercom slash support and looking for a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.